What's up guys, this is Juha Making Stuff and we are starting a new project. I found this pretty cool T-Rex model from Thingverse. Uh, it's a, it's the MakerBot, um, I don't know what, what it is, but uh, MakerBot I guess did it. So you, could, you could print it with their uh, printer or something like that. Um, but um, I'm running the Prusa so printer, so um, uh, I just got the STL files and uh, printed printed it out. Um, uh, in case you're wondering why the different colors, um, I just ran out the black and uh, had to change to uh, switch to this lighter color, which is actually pretty close to looking bone. But anyways, we're going to pa paint all over these and uh, do some weathering and uh, make the bones look old. Um, this was my first, um, let's say, um, more precise um, uh, model print. Uh, I've been doing some some more easier stuff uh, before on the on the Prusa, but uh, this turned out pretty good. Um, I'm uh, slicing these or printing at, at uh, 0.15 uh, millimeters. Uh, thickness or accuracy so as you can see it's it's pretty nice there's some overhangs on the uh, or, or some uh, let's say um, faults in these uh, teeth because there's these overhangs and the printer can't handle all of them but overall this is pretty good uh, quality I'm uh, just uh, priming this with filler primer and uh, I should get pretty decent pretty decent quality uh, finish on this uh, afterwards without any uh, without any um, sanding because I don't really feel like doing sanding all these parts uh, the black material is a bit glossy, but I hope you can uh, pick up the details. Let's um, let's take a look at the parts when I've I've primed them with something like gray, so the forms will come out even better. But overall, um, the print quality is pretty good, I'd say. Come on, let's focus. No, you don't want like that? Let's try something else. This is the hip bone, uh, lower part of it. I'll have to do some, because um, this is like a, a press fit build, so uh, there's these holes in these models and you can print like uh, brackets or something like that to hold them in place but I will be gluing them in place and uh, doing some putty on these on these seams so it will be looking a bit nicer uh, it's a pretty big build um, the head is like a already half of my palm so I guess it's it will it'll be something like what uh, maybe 30 centimeters long it's pretty big um, with the files came uh, there was a base but I think I will be uh, building something myself so uh, we'll have to see what I'll come up with um, the print took quite a long I've been printing these on and off for quite a while uh, but that's because I went with the uh, bit bit more detail but uh, I think it was worth it this bits look pretty good um, most troubles I had were was um, this neck piece it's connected to the bed um, printer bed like this on, on here so 
as you can imagine when the printer is um, printing these parts so there will be uh, somewhat uh, I don't say a lot of pressure but uh, pressure in here uh, and uh, uh, I failed this print a couple of times I didn't want to use supports uh, uh, as they come with the slicer software so when it would be filled with supports so uh, if you can see there's a couple of these small knobs or rods uh, uh, that I just modeled here to uh, be a uh, like a detachable supports that I can uh, easily get rid of. Uh, here's the photo of it on the printer pad bed. Yeah, so it it did the trick, and I finally could finish this one. Usually, it kind of broke loose at somewhere around this level when the. Uh, leveraging force was too much for the attachment even though I put like a, a um, something like 10 millimeter brim on here so it would uh, stay on the bed but it came loose anyways um, but uh, for the printer I guess the ribs were the uh, hardest part to print uh, there was a lot of overhang and you can see it on the bottom side of the um, ribs um, they need to get some cleanup but it's not that bad there's also some um, what do you call this wiring no but anyways these small strings like uh, uh, when the uh, filament gets um, pulled uh, so it, it, it makes this kind of uh, really, really light string, almost like a cobweb type of stuff. But I'll get rid of those and uh, do some cleanup. Um, uh, I've already uh, removed the most of the uh, base attachment brim thingy. Uh, if this could focus. Yeah, uh, it's it's the sharp edge here, so I'll have to clean up those. And uh, the head was attached on the bed like this, so there's a big flat space here. So I'll do something like putty um, sculpt here, so that it it won't stand out so much. Cause uh, when the neck attaches somewhere like here so that looks pretty weird may have to look some references uh, how the back of the skull actually goes but um, this this doesn't have to be 100% accurate so something close enough should do fine but it's really well done uh, the, the the model because uh, everything fits pretty nicely and uh, it uh, should be uh, or could be assembled without any clue with the clips that you can print but uh, I will be cluing this one um, so and uh, maybe if um, there's enough support in these uh, actual bones and then th I maybe don't have to use like a support stick to the somewhere to the stomach or something like that so maybe it can hold on its own but um We'll see that later. Uh, so I'll start cleaning up these things and uh, uh, start priming them and uh, get rid of those most of those lines. All right. So I started out cleaning up up those rims. They were pretty easy, just using sandpaper and knife. filing away some of the concave parts. Uh, you remember those uh, small string type of uh, filament debris there? Um, turns out you can burn them away, so 
here I am just using a small torch just to kind of melt the small strings away worked out pretty well and um, here I'm just uh, uh, putting the ribs together um, unfortunately I <laughs> messed up the order that they, they were so I had to do some uh, figuring out how to how to put them on in correct order uh, here I'm using uh, Tamiya's uh, epoxy uh, just to uh, fill those uh, flat parts uh, this is the lower jaw of the of the Rex. Uh, the jaw had a couple of those uh, flat flat spots there, so I'm I'm rounding them up and uh, uh, doing the back of the skull also. Uh, this is like a two-component epoxy that hardens in. Uh, I guess it's hour, hour or two just to make it hard. Uh, you just knead together that uh, light brown and white part, and uh, that starts the uh, chemical reaction that makes it harder or harden by time. And this is the hip. Um, the hip was two parted, so uh, it le I left with the seam, the seam line. So I'm using uh, the Tamiya filler just to fill that gap. I've also primed that part, and uh, once the filler is dry, I'll, I'll just uh, um, sand it down. So here is the first base base coat of the color filler primer uh, worked out pretty well uh, to eliminate those print lines. Here I'm using a darker brown to put in the holes and the crevices. Uh, you know, like doing a ambient occlusion type of effect. There I was um, putting some some thinner or more thinner paint because the paint wasn't flying that well, so I thinned it out a bit more. And here's a mix of three paints uh, for the highlights. Uh, just spraying lightly on those. Um, parts that are uh, like protruding out and uh, the sort of the outer corners uh, just a subtle highlight and uh, once everything is painted I started uh, putting it all together uh, I ended up using those uh, uh, joining parts on on some some occasions because they were uh, working out pretty well. But I also used used glue glue on those parts too. Uh, the thing that I just sprayed was the um, kicker for the uh, uh, super glue, so it. Um, accelerates the the drying time. The 
production model ended up being quite big. It's, I think I measured it something like 53 centimeters from from nose to tail, so it was a lot bigger than I expected. So once everything was uh, painted, I started building up the base um, using like a, I guess it's uh, spruce or something like that. Can't even remember what what the wood I was using. Uh, there I'm. I'm just doing a uh, an angled cut f just to make it a bit, bit more interesting than uh, than just a uh, square. So it's it it has a, like a bevel on the sides there. This is a really really small and uh, cheap table saw that I'm using. Then. Uh, I'm just drilling out a hole for a brass rod that I'm going to use to support the uh, the skeleton. Maybe if you would anchor the leg really well on the base, it might hold up and. Uh, support its weight but uh, um, I didn't take the risk. Uh, here I'm just staining the base with a regular brown um, something like a, I guess it's like an old oak colored wood stain. I gave it a couple of coats let it try uh, uh, maybe some hours between the coats. The second coat uh, made it much more even the surface, so don't be alarmed if, you, if the first coat is uh, a bit more blotchy. So there we go, that's the final final product. Uh, it was really fun. Uh, first time using uh, the printer for this kind of figure work. Uh, the big size uh, made it easier uh, for the printer, but I guess uh, you could print a lot smaller things with a reasonable uh, resolution. So that's it for the MakerBot build uh, T-Rex uh, Let's see what, what I'll do next. Uh, hit that like, subscri subscribe, and uh, see you again. Bye! My guru once said, nobody dies a minute too soon or a minute too late. And if your commitment is to the physical plane, to the E, and that's what's real to you, then, if that's all there is, then longer is better. They may not be, but I mean, I'm just giving you a little metaphor to play with, you know, it's all... Because this thing is not conceptual, but I'm playing with concept. I would say.